But one thing is for sure, if you base your buying decisions only on fundamentals and not on the technicals, you will make a lot of mistakes. Why can we say that Tesla has not enough strength? Because Tesla cannot break the seller resistance at 240.89. This is why it has not enough strength. The buyers are too shy. The buyers don't want to buy above 240.89. They don't have to buy. They can just put a market order and there are enough sellers in order for them to get their shares. This is why I told you guys we should not buy Tesla before we close above 240.89. We cannot close above that number. We have been trying since Monday of this week and we just cannot do it. We came very close on Tuesday. We came extremely close. We had a high at 240.82, 7 cents off of the resistance. But no, these resistance are there for a reason. They are there to showcase the tug of war between the buyers and sellers. And they are there for us to prevent us from getting into a stock just because it had a great day on Monday of this week. And that number, 240.89, is ingrained in people's mind and people are just respecting it. Buyers don't have to buy higher than that price because we have enough sellers right here to give them their shares. This is telling us that the tug of war is basically won again by the sellers. Will it change tomorrow? It's possible, but right now this is what's happening. Let's take a look at the one hour chart to understand how this played out today. So the first hour of the day, we opened at 238.66. And this is interesting because this is a price number that we could not really hit yesterday. We did not close above 238.11 yesterday, but now we opened above 238.11 today. But then look at this. We have a big red candle down. This means that we have a bunch of sellers. We have a bunch of sellers and the buyers that are buying are not putting enough pressure to prompt the stock up. And lo and behold, look at this. There are no random moves in the stock market. We have a support at 229.28 that has been used this week since Monday. And this is where the sellers stopped. And this is where the buyers started to gain some ground in that tug of war. The buyers came in on the second hour and the third hour. But then on the fourth hour, we have a long wick at the top on the candle. We have no wick or Almost no wick at the bottom. This is an indication that we tried to go higher during that hour, but then the sellers squished the price down. This candle is not a bullish candle. This candle is a bearish candle. We also had a second bearish candle, and then we had proper red candles showing us that the sellers were indeed gaining grounds again. And we stopped just a little bit above 229.28. And what is of note is that we don't have stochastic over 60 on the one hour chart. Unless something changes in the market, this is not looking good for tomorrow. So uh, there is a real possibility that we can break below 229.28 because we don't have stochastic over 60. And without stochastic over 60, there is no force in the stock. So it's very possible that we start going lower than that number. Let's go back on the daily chart. One thing I would like you to pay attention to is that the low of the day is right smack on our support right here. We still have buyers that are a little bit higher than when they were last week. That's the positive thing, but so far they are just too shy again to go above 240.89. If we look at our indicators, uh, Stochastic was starting to climb ba back up and we were at 43 yesterday, but now we are caving in at 31. So uh, this is not going in the right direction. We still don't have the uh, MACD crossover, which is going to be when the green line is going to cross over the red line. And in terms of our RSI decreasing strength pattern, which is expressed by this red line right here, we started to get close to it and maybe we were going to break it today. But no, we are caving into that line again. And also the MI is also bearish. There is no reason to buy Tesla right now. It's not meeting our de-risking buying criteria. Let's take a look at some Tesla news. So Tesla adds Cybertruck delivery event invite to referral awards. When you have a Tesla and you refer somebody else and that person buys a Tesla, you can get some credits in order to buy some accessory at the Tesla store, but now they have added as a reward 
an invitation to the Tesla Cybertruck event. So you will need 30,000 credits in order to attend to that event. This is interesting because I'm assuming that it's going to take a few months for people to start accumulating that amount of credits. So we can already maybe start to guess as to what is the date for the Cybertruck reveal event. Also, Elon Musk says, if Lego can do it, so can we. About Cybertruck quality in a leaked Tesla email. Elon has highlighted the need for high standards of quality and single-digit micron tolerance with the Cybertruck due to its straight edges. So let's look at this email. Due to the nature of Cybertruck, which is made of bright metal with mostly straight edges, any dimensional variation shows up like a sore thumb. And Tesla already has a problem with gaps, uneven gaps all around the same car. All parts for this vehicle, whether internal or from suppliers, need to be designed and built to sub 10 micron accuracy. That means all part dimensions need to be to the third decimal place in millimeters and tolerances need to be specified in single digit microns. If Lego and soda cans, which are very low cost, can do this, so can we. Precision predicates perfectionism. To be frank, I am quite happy that Tesla is addressing this because Tesla is making great cars. They have great engines and great battery. If you package that with some body panels that are all over the place in terms of the gaps between each other, I think it's not sending the right message. And also what's quite interesting is that Elon Musk sent a similar e email to Tesla employees in 2018. Precision. Most of the design tolerances of the Model 3 are already better than any other car in the world. Soon they will all be better. This is not enough. We will keep going until the Model 3 build precision is a factor of 10 better than any other car in the world. I am not kidding. Our car needs to be designed and built with such accuracy and precision that if an owner measures dimensions, panel gaps and flushness, and their measurements don't match the Model 3 specs. It just means that their measuring tape is wrong. This was in 2018 and he is coming back at it in 2023. Let's hope that they take time to make it a reality this time. Let's take a look at the VIX. So VIX is up 1.24, 7.76%, close at 17.21. Okay, so the VIX had started to come back down and yesterday we were right smack on our bullish support channel and we even had last stochastic over 60 it was really showing sign that it wanted to go down today this did not happen we have a big move up and also we have a big meeting tomorrow we have a big meeting tomorrow jerome powell is going to speak about the interest rates and the inflation and everything i think that the uncertainty is coming in anticipation of that speech We'll see tomorrow at the close what was the reaction to his speech tomorrow. Rivian is continuing down 0.68, down 3.35%. We have lost 2016 and we are just uh, coming down a little bit slowly. Look at how flat Stochastic is. Stochastic is super flat. There is no force in that stock at all. So it's just drifting away. Xpeng is up 14 cents, 0.87%, closed at 16.20. This one is not so bad. It's still above 1557 and it's still above its buyer support. So it's not going super high, but at least it's not going lower, even with a low stochastic. This is why only having a low stochastic is not enough for us to start thinking that the stock is going to go down. We need to have a low stochastic and a break of support. Right now we have low stochastic, but we have no break in support. This is just going sideways. Neo, nothing to see here, down 20 cents, 1.85%, closed at 10.64. This is just going sideways. Palantir is zigzagging a little bit. We had a great day yesterday and it seemed like it wanted to go somewhere. Even though we had no stochastic, we were anticipating that maybe it wants to start to go higher and higher. But now today we are down $1.16, 7.58%, closed at 14.14. So we have just broken again our support at 1441. We are still outside of our downward channel. So at least we cannot say that we are coming down again. This is still basically a sideway move. 
And if we look a little bit more closely, it seems like the stock is finding support right here at the 1354. We had support right there on June 23rd and very close to it on August 18 and also today. Maybe there's some buyer support right there. NVIDIA, I think this is pretty disappointing. NVIDIA had a great earnings call yesterday. We had the 29% positive surprise in earning, 20% positive surprise in revenue. And what did the stock do? We closed up 58 cents, 0.12%, closed at 471.74. This is a great example as to why I don't base my stock buying decisions on the fundamentals. Because here you have great fundamentals, but there are other factors that we cannot all understand. There are institutions that have something to do with that. What is their buying and selling patterns? We have the retail investors, we have the analysts, we have the war, we have the high interest rates and everything. Maybe it's the fear of Jerome Powell that is creating this. It's hard to know for sure, but one thing is for sure. If you base your buying decisions only on fundamentals and not on the technicals, you will make a lot of mistake. That's for sure. Let's take a look at our indices uh, a little bit. So QQQ, boom, straight down 2%. So we have been back inside of our bearish channel and we are just outside of it. Dow Jones, we were stabilizing a little bit, but now we are just giving in. We are down 1%. SPX, the same thing again. This is just caving in. This is just caving in. And I need you to pay attention that in all of these moves up, we did not have stochastic over 60. When we don't have stochastic over 60, any move up is not to be believed. Is not to be believed. And we have the exact proof right here. It might come back up tomorrow, but stochastic is right. NASDAQ Composite, the same thing, down 1.87%. Uh, Ten-year bonds are going a little bit higher, 1% higher. Physical gold, gold is having an even Stephen day. Uh, Stochastic is going higher and higher, so we are at 42.58. We need gold above 1508 to start considering it a buy. Silver, we had a really nice move yesterday. We have Stochastic over 60, so basically all that we are waiting for is a break of 841. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is just going sideways, nothing to see here. Ripple, the same thing, is just going sideways. And US dollar, big move into the uh, US dollar at 0.64%. Remember, it had a hard time breaking 103.580. It was trying, it succeeded on, on August 22nd, but then it caved back in the next day. But now, boom, this is pretty frank. You can use the two candle rule for any break because sometimes we have a break with one candle and the next candle is coming back. If you want to be a little bit more sure that a break is valid, you can wait for a two candle break. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you like what I do, you can become a YouTube member. Click on my Trading View affiliate link. I'm going to wish you a great evening. We are going to talk tomorrow and I'm going to tell you à la prochaine.